This South Carolina scholarship organization recently crowned Jada Samuel as Miss South Carolina 2023 and she's from Greenville and will now get to compete for the title of Miss America later this year. I sat down with her ahead of the big competition. Take a look. Well, I'm joined this morning with Miss South Carolina 2023 Jada Samuel. Thanks so much for speaking with me. Thank you so much for having me. Yes, I'm excited and congratulations on the title. How do you feel? Thank you. It's it's a surreal feeling, but I am excited. It's something that I've been preparing for for five years now. So I was like, I'm ready to go like day one. So it's been exciting. So take me back to the beginning. When and how did you get involved in pageants? I competed in high school after watching my cousin do a state pageant in South Carolina. I was inspired by her and I was like, I'm going to go for it. I'm going to take on a state pageant and I decided to do it. I had fun with it, but I wanted to enjoy college. So I took some time off before finding out that the Miss America organization was the largest provider of scholarships to young women in the country. And $60,000 sounded like a dream come true to me. So I was like, Absolutely. Sign me up for whatever scholarship competition this is. So I started competing at 21 in the Miss America organization. And here you are today yeah. as Miss South Carolina 2023. What are some of the things that you want to accomplish this year holding this title? I want to be able to reach so many youth and connect them to mentoring programs throughout our state. My platform this year or community service initiative is called I Shape Me, empowering girls to lead through mentorship. So it's kind of a spinoff of the nonprofit organization that I started a few years back, almost 10 years back, actually. And so the service led me to this organization and just connecting students with mentorship is something that I'm really excited to do and also connecting adults to the opportunities to give back. So that's that's what I'll be working on this year. Well, congratulations and good luck on accomplishing all of those goals. Um, you've won previous titles in the past, Miss Bridge City being one of them. What's your goal when you compete in these pageants? Of, of course, besides, you know, the obvious one, winning. Yeah, the scholarship money. Oh, my goodness. The scholarship money has changed my life. I've received $85,000 in scholarships through competing in this organization. 60000 of it coming on Saturday night when I was crowned Miss South Carolina. <laughs> but even before that, I tell people all the time that winning is not the end-all, be-all. Like, there are so many scholarships that I've gained along the way. And regardless of if I'd won on Saturday or not, my MBA was paid for just from competing in the Miss America organization. I'm sure a lot of people would hop on board if they knew there's so much that goes into pageants that you can win too. It's not just the title, a lot comes with it. So, Absolutely. So that's amazing. Um, another neat thing that you get to do while you hold this title is you get to actually compete in Miss America later this year. So. My mind is like going I, crazy. I was going <laughs> to say, how are your emotions to be alongside all of these other phenomenal women? Oh my gosh, I am thrilled to be representing so many different things on that stage. One, being the fourth black woman to win Miss South Carolina. That means so much to people in my community. Being able to do a monologue as a talent um, or a herstory is what Miss America is now calling that. But just to bring that theater and speech and debate background to the Miss America stage is going to be really cool. And then to be able to talk about the service that I've done over the last few years of my life. So I'm really excited to meet, I mean, amazing women across the country. This is like mind blowing to me. <laughs> and holding this title, you represent so many people. I mean, South Carolina in general. Your, your home state, you know, what does this mean to you? Absolutely, it means so much. I, I won on Saturday night and the first thing that I said was that my grandmother, who is 86, would not have had the opportunity to compete on that stage because of the color of her skin. So I think that it mattered so much for me to be able to represent people of all backgrounds. I mean, not just African-American people in South Carolina or black people in South Carolina, but to represent people who thought that they were too old to chase a dream, being the oldest woman to ever win the crown. Representing people who do have unique talents and gifts, like the one that I presented on stage. So I think that I just represent so many different people in the state and and I think so many people can relate to the story of just never giving up and continuing to strive for the things that you want. And let's go back to your monologue and you were mentioning bringing speech and debate, you know, to the forefront. Yeah. Um, what goes into putting something together like that? What do you, what's the process like? Every year is something different. I've competed again five times. So one year I had the opportunity to talk about sexual assault on the stage. And that piece was written by someone that I know and love. And it was a very, you know, 
real story. Um, and then I also had the opportunity to talk about the Emanuel AME shooting in Charleston one year through a piece called Amazing Grace. So this year I decided that I wanted to share a story about purpose and it was the Angela Bassett acceptance speech from Black Girls Rock, the Icon Award. A lot of people remember that speech. Um, so I had the opportunity to share that story about purpose. So I've had so many cool like windows of opportunity to just share stories on that stage and I think that matters to people. And I love to ask this question, and I think you're the perfect person to ask, but what would be your message to all of the young girls at home that are looking up to you right now saying, you know, mom, I want to do that. You know, I want to be like her. Yeah. What would you tell them? That you can. You absolutely can. Um, this was a dream that I thought was denied for me, being a woman who aged out of the competition last year. And I always say I'm a, I'm a spiritual person, um, and there are so many opportunities where, you know, God will open a door for you, and if you want to, you have to walk through it, and you have to walk through it with purpose and, and realize that there's something so much bigger that can come from it. So that's, that's what I would tell all of the young women. Well, thank you so much, Jada, for speaking with me and sharing your powerful story. I'm wishing you all of the best on thank that you. Miss America stage. It's going to be so exciting much. to see you up there. <laughs>